All right, let's talk about objects in free fall. So what I mean by this is um, something that's only under the influence of the force of gravity. So uh, let me give you a little background. Um, until 1600, uh, when Galileo finally dropped uh, two objects off the Leaning Tower of Pisa and showed that they hit at the same time, even though they had different masses, um, it was understood or believed that heavier objects fell faster when they indeed do not. So if I was to draw M1 and an M2, two different masses, and release them from the same height, this one could equal 10 kilograms, and this one could equal 20 kilograms. Now, if we neglect air resistance, which we'll add air resistance in eventually, but um, we'll neglect it, put it in a, in a vacuum, we would say, in a vacuum. Um, they are going to fall at the exact same rate under the influence of gravity on the surface of Earth. Um, this value is what we call G, and it is has a magnitude of 9.81 meters per second squared, and it points downwards towards Earth. Um, once we get into gravity itself a little bit more, I'll show you where that number comes from. But basically, they're going to hit at the same time. Um, Galileo actually figured out a lot of this first by taking a ball and he put it in a V track. So something like this. He set a, a mass here, a, a ball, and he let it roll down at different angles of theta. And by, by decreasing the angle, it rolled slower, had a, a less effect, and uh, we call this an inclined plane. He used the V-track so that there's very little friction when he was doing the experiments. Otherwise, we'd have to consider the friction and the more of the rotational mass, which we'll get into later also. Um, but this allowed him to make very accurate measurements uh, in distinct time intervals and by increasing the slope he was able to draw conclusions about free falling objects. Um, you can do this by taking a coin, take two different coins or something, take a quarter and a dime, right? They do not weigh the same. They have different masses. If you drop them at the same time they're going to hit the ground at the same time. And this is, even with air resistance, that's going to happen. You're not going to be able to notice which one hits. It'll more likely will be you dropping them at the wrong time, or one before the other causing one to hit. Um, so free fall, by definition, is when something is only under the influence of gravity. Uh, if you take dynamics with me, um, one of the topics is orbital mechanics, and if you had Earth here, and a satellite going around in a maybe elliptical or circular trajectory, it is constantly in free fall. It always has a central force pointing towards Earth, and it is only under the influence of gravity, so we can say that it's in free fall. And in that case, there's no drag, too. We are out of the atmosphere in most cases. Um, we see also when we look at Earth, if here's our equator, if we were on a big mountain, our value of G is going to be less than 9.81 meters per second squared. And that comes from our the force of gravity being equal to big M times little m times the constant g, all divided by the radius squared. It's an inverse square law, and we'll go over that in the future. Okay, um, so let's pose a couple questions. Let's say we have two skydivers jumping out of a plane. 
one skydiver jumps out before the other one and they don't have to have the same mass so let's say mass one is not equal to mass two they could also but one jumps before the other and starts making his way down then the second one jumps all right um do they maintain the same separation distance as they travel down towards earth It's pretty conceptual. You can do the math on this too. Um, but what ends up happening is at any given instant, the speed of the skydivers are different because the first one had a head start. In any time interval after this instant, the two skydivers increase their speeds at the same rate because they're both under the influence of the same gravity. So they're speeding up the same rate, but one had a by the time the second one jumped, the first one already had a, a velocity. The second one had a zero velocity on its way down. So it had to, it's kind of, it's trying to play catch up, but it never does. Um, so even though they have the same acceleration, the, the difference remains in their speed throughout the fall. So the first one's gonna hit the ground first and their distance is going to get greater and greater and greater between each other. So do they maintain the same separation distance? No, they don't. Um, one will get further and further from two as they fall. Uh, that's just a little conceptual thing. Um, let's do a problem where, let's say we have a building and on the top of that building is maybe a cannon and we fire this thing off and let's say at the top of the cannon we get a distance of 50 meters and there's the ground um we're going to use the same equations that we used before except we're going to replace x with y because we're in the y direction now um you'll see some books don't always but uh, we should keep track of which directions we're in. So this thing is going to shoot up a ball. And when it comes back down, we're just going to say it narrowly misses. We're going to ignore the motion in the x direction and just pretend that there's y motion only. And then it's going to hit the ground. Um, there's a couple things we want to find out. Let's find out what this maximum height is. Let's find out so max height. Let's also find out the velocity when it hits or when it returns to this point right here. We'll call this B and this A. So what's the velocity at B? Um, and then Find the, let's find the position at some time. Find the position of the object at t is equal to, let's do uh, five seconds. All right, to find the max height, we typically are gonna have to find the time to where the final velocity goes to zero. Right up here, we have a zero velocity. So if I wanna know how much time it takes to go up, I am going to have to use the velocity in the y direction final is equal to the velocity in the y direction initial plus acceleration times time. And this is gravity. We can go ahead and replace that. Um, we know that at the top, it has to come to a stop and turn back around and come this direction. So let's say final velocity goes to zero. Now we can rearrange this equation for time to find the time to the top and get time is equal to uh, zero minus the initial velocity in the y direction divided by the acceleration or g. And we're gonna wanna use a negative 9.81 for g 
meters per second squared until we get to uh, forces and then we're gonna just put a positive 9.81 in there and we'll work off the free body diagram so if we have a weight of 10 kilograms just giving you a preview uh, 10 kilograms times the acceleration due to gravity we'll get the direction from the way this arrow is pointing so but for now we need to put in that negative sign so we get a time to the top of 2.04 seconds. All right, now we can find the maximum height of the stone or the cannonball. The maximum height, let's do y final is equal to y initial plus the velocity in the y direction times time. plus one half g t squared all right um let's see did they give us an initial velocity uh they do it's v naught is equal to sorry i should have put that in there uh 20 meters per second now if we call this is zero we can just go ahead and cross it out and we can say that we just have the 20 meters per second as an initial velocity we know the time now is 2.04 seconds and one half times negative 9.81 meters per second squared times 2.04 seconds don't forget the squared that's going to Sorry, that's going to give me a y final of 20.4 meters. That's how far it went up. All right, um, the next part wants us to find what the velocity is. So here's our roof again. Here's our cannonball. Um, What's the velocity as it comes back through this same point right here? So if this is A, what's the velocity of B? Well, if we, this should become intuitive at some point, but let's go ahead and prove it. It should have the same exact velocity, but in the opposite direction. Right? If you throw something up from the ground level, whatever velocity you throw it at, is going to return at that same speed minus a little bit due to, to drag or uh, friction due to air resistance okay so let's use VF squared is equal to V initial squared plus 2 times gravity times it's gonna be a Delta Y now in this case where Delta Y is equal to Y final minus Y initial now if we check it out y final is equal to y initial so this term ends up going away this whole thing is zero and we just proved to ourselves that the final velocity at b is going to be equal to the initial velocity because we can get rid of those square signs so um the magnitudes are the same uh in this case we need to be able to no, it's actually going in the opposite direction. We, we lose that with these squareds, but it is going in a negative 20 meters per second now on its way back down. All right. Um, what else? We wanted to find the velocity at five seconds. All we can do that by just doing v final is equal to v initial plus the acceleration times time where the acceleration is gravity and what we get plugging we have we have everything right um, we have our initial velocity and this as negative 9.81 we get simply a negative 29.0 meters per second. So at five seconds, it 
It's going faster now, so that's somewhere down here. Five seconds. Ta-da! If we wanted to find the position at five seconds, we would throw it into our uh, position equation for y final is equal to y initial plus the velocity in the y direction times time plus one half gt squared. Um, go ahead and crank this out at five seconds. It would be at a position of negative 22.5 meters from the top of the building.